this was the epistle reading from this past Sunday. Um, this was this is St. Paul's first letter to Timothy, and uh, this is the first chapter. St. Paul writes, I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful, appointing me to his service. Though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, an insolent opponent, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with, with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I receive mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you came into this world to save sinners. And we give you thanks that by your death on the cross, you have paid for all of our sins. And by your resurrection from the tomb, you have opened the way to everlasting life to us. We ask that you bless us with your Holy Spirit to continue to grow in our knowledge of you. That we may grow in our trust of you and your Father, and grow in our love towards one another. Guide us by your word, and that we may walk in your ways and glorify you. All these things we ask in your holy name, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Okay. Um, I bring that reading up, one, because I think it's a great reading, and we didn't, didn't focus on it too much, although the hymns if you remember the hymns from Sunday, uh, Chief of Sinners Though I Be was the opening hymn. That's, what, that's another translation for what Paul is saying here. Uh, Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the most, the chief. Um, and then the other hymn, Jesus Sinners Doth Receive, while that one um, actually goes with the gospel reading more because the gospel reading was the, uh, the tax collectors and sinners were gathered around the scribes and the Pharisees grumbled saying this man receives and eats with sinners. So, but the, the parallels between those two hymns, uh, one, just how powerful they are, um, and then two, of what it, actually, what it means that Jesus came into this world for, what he came to do. Um, and all that ties into what we're talking about uh, with this gender and sexual identity, but with sin in general. Um, that's one thing we can never lose focus of, is that we need a savior just as much as all the people who are propagating these things. Um, they might be in a status where it's unknown to them, where they don't recognize what we talked about last week, the law, God's will and design, and they're actually going against that, and they're violating those, those things. Um, but the point is, is that when they're brought to that and they realize, I've not done what God wanted me to do, I'm not the person God wanted me to be, uh, I'm not acting according to his will, well, Jesus sinners doth receive. Jesus came into this world to save sinners. So that's always the, the, the thing we keep in um, kind of as the, the lens of our reality is that every person that we meet, no matter who they are, where they come from, what race they are, what ethnicity, um, even what sexual orientation, what gender identity, or what they identify as gender, um, Jesus died for them. So to, to keep that in the forefront of our minds uh, is what drives us as Christians. So, uh, with that, a <clears throat> we didn't get too far in our, our booklet last week. Uh, that's okay. Uh, we had uh, some good discussion and on the law, which is still up here as our, our notes, and uh, just the the uh, part of this that and I, I kind of mentioned it in that, that little my my opening monologue, I guess. Um, the big part of this that, that is always uh, stays with us is that the law is God's will and design for creation. So the, the law was there when God created it. When he spoke things into being, when he said, be light, that was law in a sense because it was light doing what light was supposed to do. When he said, you know, let the uh, earth bring forth veg vegetation, let the birds of the air fill the, or birds fill the air and fish fill the sea. I mean, all of this is his design that's coming into being. It's following his will. When he makes man, same thing. When he tells man, be fruitful, multiply, have dominion. Don't eat from the tree of the uh, knowledge of good and evil. All of that is his design. And so 
everything at that point, because there was no sin up to there, everything did what was according to God's law. But when sin enters, then everything starts to break down. And that's where all of this gender identity, sexual identity, all these confusions and these deviations from God's original design come in. That's where it hits us squarely. So, but last we left off in our book, uh, I have at least on our notes, uh, page 13. And this, the, the, the uh, topic, heading, heading, that's it. The heading for this sexual identity. And again, I'm a grammar Nazi, and so the, uh, the first sentence there, I, 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 it's like nails on a chalkboard for me. It should be, to whom you are attracted sexually defines your sexual identity. But they have it written who you are attracted to. Anyways. Um, so the, what the author is bringing up here is there's the difference between sexual identity and gender identity. Some, someone's sexual identity is quite different from his or her gender identity. Um, this can be especially confusing when someone's gender and sexual identity seeming, are seemingly in conflict. For instance, a person born male but who gender identifies as female might be attracted to men but claims to be a heterosexual, not homosexual. Confused yet? Yep, me too. Yeah, and this is the, the, the type of um, language, like, th I mean, these, these are the type of confusing things that come out. And it's more than simply just, do I identify as male or female? Now it's, do I identify as all these different things? There's a, um, and there, I think there's a glossary of them in the back, but like one that I heard, um, it's just kind of in an interview, um, not related to this, but just talking about uh, culture in general. And they said, you know, I have somebody that presents as a male, but identifies as this. And so it's like, does that mean he dresses as a male, or she dresses as a male, or, or what? And so, but there's these, the, all these different new adjectives and, and descriptors uh, for, for these, this spectrum of gender identity. But the author goes on to say that's kind of nonsense. And as you probably know, these, there are three basic sexual identities. Okay? And so this is where he does make uh, the distinction sexually what who you are attract to whom you are attracted gender either you're male or female but sexually there's heterosexual which is the norm this is part of god's design attracted to the opposite sex homosexual attracted to the same sex and bisexual attracted to uh, both sexes equally uh, and then that is uh, and then he gets into the reality of the world's plan this is the contrast between God's plan, God's design. Okay? Now the works of the flesh are evident. He's quoting Paul here. The works of evident are uh, flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay? And if you go through that list and just kind of keep this definition in your mind of that the law is God's will for creation, how much of these are violations of God's law? Sexual immorality, of course. He made them male and female. Impurity, and that's not, I mean, that's, that's the, the impure, like impure thoughts, but when you think about how God talks about his law later, be holy as I am holy. Be set apart as I am set apart. And that's the impurity completely goes against that. You're not supposed to be impure. You're supposed to be pure. Pastor, I, I, mm -hmm. I, I, was, I commented on that the other, the other day. And, yep. you know, in our family, we have, we have three children, two girls and one boy. Yep. I'm a boy. Uh, isn't when... If, if, if you go into this world and you want to change yourself, you are actually going against God's will, are you not? It depends on what you want to change to. I mean, if you, if you, if you change into a uh, lady, you, 
there would there would be three three ladies. Yes. And, and God made two. Correct. You're against you're against what 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 you came in. Aren't you supposed to t be what you came in as? So. Yeah, in, in, in one sense, yes, and, but the other sense that you have to realize that has to change about you is your sinful nature. And that's what God throughout your whole life is doing. From the moment you're baptized to the moment that you die, the Holy Spirit is working on you to, uh, as Luther says in the Catechism, kill that old Adam daily by drown, daily drown him by, drown him by daily contrition and repentance. And, and that's repentance there really means changing your mind, changing who you are, turning back to God. So it's this daily, ongoing struggle of going away from what our sinful nature, our flesh, all these things that Paul just listed out, entices us to do, wants us to do, to put those away and to turn and be the new creation that you are in Christ. Now, that's tough. That's why God gives us the Holy Spirit. It's tough because only one person, Jesus Christ, did it perfectly. And that's why we have to come back to him for forgiveness or when we don't, when we don't follow God's law perfectly. We can't, we can't run around and steal. We right. Can't, we can't run around and kill people. Right. And that gets into the... What's, what's the purpose? Why does God tell us don't steal, don't kill, don't lie, or don't bear false witness, don't covet? Because all of those will ultimately hurt our neighbor. And that's even, it, it, you have to think about this in kind of a bigger scale, that's even why God gives us male and female. Because two men can't make a baby. That's a controversial statement now, I know, but that's... <laughs> That's the reality. Yeah. Two men, two men cannot make a baby. Two women cannot make a baby. You have to have a male and a female, man and a woman, to make a baby. Okay, and that, and and the reason that that's important is because, ultimately, that is, a, 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 as I said, like a larger scale loving your neighbor because that's fill, fulfilling what God has designed: be fruitful and multiply and to have dominion and to carry on but to be his creatures that he created us to be there's many more things listed here than just sexual things right yes you know, exactly you know, yeah and that and, quite and, a complete and, list <laughs> yeah. yeah go ahead from a medical point of view I'm thinking kind of maybe way back maybe 10 20 years I know it's been around forever because it's mm -hmm. such a situation which mm -hmm. But if somebody came and was diabetic, or they had kidney disease, or they had heart issues, or they had teeth that were crooked, oh, the I'm all those. did all the things they could do <laughs> you you know, to fix you, <laughs> to be a wholesome whole person, yep. to be the person that you are supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So somewhere it seems like, not only in adjective, culture, verbs, but it's like, I, I feel like, we as a society drop the ball on the mental health of people. Yeah. Because it's 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 physically yes, but it all starts upstairs. Mm -hmm. And so why? I guess I have to question. Yeah. That. So and, and this, as a psych nurse even. So where did you guys drop the ball? Was it cash flow? Was it to build yourself on a podium that you just found out? I'm going to make you all the way down. B well, or just I, I, process. This is a little bit of speculation, but I don't, I don't think I'm too far off on this. So going back, thinking about the philosophies and psychologies that changed um, with the Enlightenment, uh, we started viewing the human body much more as a machine and less as a body-soul creation by God. Corrupted, but body-soul creation nonetheless in the image of God. And so... Uh, so yes, when you look at that, well then it's the, the physical, mechanical things that we can look at medically and, and change or improve. We can figure out how to make your teeth straighter. We can we come up with dialysis for those who ever have kidney problems. Um, we create insulin to give to diabetic patients. And so 
Yeah, we, that, and those are. Just better society or just better at hosting? Uh, well, I mean, I think ultimately the goal was both. Um, but the, where, where that kind of, and, and those aren't bad things. Those are, those are good things. God, and God has gifted us with that knowledge and with those resources to do those things. But there, in that did, as you're questioning, did the, the machine side, mechanical functions of our body, the, um, did that take precedence over the soul, the psyche, the nephish, what exists, what animates us? I would say perhaps it did. And then, you know, because there, and instead, and in, maybe, maybe this is a little farther upfield, but again, I don't think I'm uh, too far off base with this, but when we treated the body that way with mechanical fixes, with medicines, with um, whatever, we thought, well, we can treat the mind and soul the same way. But I'm not sure if that's actually working. And, you know, so there's, uh, to, to give a caveat, the Army, uh, a few years ago, I think it was 2017, came out with this new um, uh, program called Holistic Health. And for like the first time in, in documented Army publication prominently, it, it, they recognized a, a human being, a soldier in particular, is made up of both body, mind, and spirit. That there's all three of those things have to be taken care of in order for the soldier to function mm -hmm. properly. Mm -hmm. And th I think that was a revelation that came to them because they had treated soldiers for so long as the machines and without actually saying, hey, we need to take care of their spirits as well. And so there's actually now a spiritual healthiness side in there. Now, I would say that my complaint, of, uh, not, it's not really a complaint, but my dissension against that is it's a generalized spirituality, which is ultimately, in my opinion, not helpful because it's not based in truth it's not based in Christ but that's that's a different discussion the point is that the army recognized that all three of these fit together and that those all three need to be taken care of <clears throat> how that ties into all of this is well sin corrupts all three of those and that's what this list is talking about from Paul I mean you don't envy envy is not a bodily thing this was just like the ninth and tenth commandment that I talked about. Right. What? Where does envy come from? From your mind. Yeah, right. From your from your 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 what animates you. Right. So you know that is what Paul is saying there is that sin affects even this much, and that the works of the flesh are uh, they happen because of what the heart and mind set themselves on. Sure. So it's it's. It's that realization that sin has affected all of our body, soul, uh, creatureliness, and yes, it has to. They, it all has to be dealt with. Well, who's the only one that has dealt with all of that? Right. Jesus Christ, because his body, soul, he's, that's what we confess in the Athanasian Creed. That Jesus Christ fully God, fully man, with all the, the features that man has, died the death that we deserve, rose from the grave for us, offered himself in the perfect obedience to God's law on our behalf. And that's what reconciles us and sets us free. And that's the promise that we have when we die and when Christ returns, is that we will be completely body, soul, spirit, all that components made perfectly at the resurrection. We won't have to deal with any of the, the, the diseases that we, physical diseases that we encounter, or the emotional, psychological diseases that lead us to make bad choices. Addiction, um, perverted sexual desires, uh, envy, whatever it is. Good, good, good question. And so, Yes. Add to, add to what she said. Mm -hmm. When you come into this world, you get that you have this body that that, uh, and you have the you have the ability to abuse it. Mm -hmm. 
and, and you can smoke cigarettes all day long and wind up with cancer. Mm -hmm. Now, when you wind up with cancer, is that God's will that you that you're going to die for for abusing it? Or well, that doesn't seem you're, fair. Uh, you're, yes. Well, okay. So, so, yeah. The, when when we make a statement of something like that doesn't seem fair to me. No offense, Jerry, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. Is God is God fair? Uh, no. 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 No, he's not. No. He says my way. Or it's exactly way. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what he right, says. Right, right. He says it's my way or it's not. If you violate this, <laughs> you deserve hell. And that's that's the the, the final if you the smoke final. A pack a day, you deserve hell. Well, no, no, that's the, we're that's not that's not what we're we're, what we're getting at. That point, they didn't sell you cigarettes with the knowledge that you were going to get cancer. Well, well, that's well, they do. <laughs> they do now. <laughs> yeah. Everybody knew they were cancer. They might not know. But but, but, them, but but when it comes to when it comes to making a judgment about is that fair or not in, in right. terms of especially like life or death things. That's not our, our decision. God is the one who gets to say, here's how I want things done, here's how it is, and the consequence if you don't do it this way is death. So that means everyone, and this was because of Adam and Eve, everyone is going to die. Now, the question is, are there things that we do that speed that death along or that you know, stave that death, death off? Yeah. Uh, in the end, is that it, 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 is it unavoidable, or death? Is, in the end, death is unavoidable. So, I mean, it's you know, whether it's whether you get cancer from cigarettes, whether you get cancer from, uh, you know, uh, bacon. bacon, yeah, uh, or 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 yeah, or you know, wherever wherever it is. Now, what I would say, so in terms of in terms of before God kind of those things don't really matter. Sin causes death. Every one of us is a sinner and every one of us sins. So the, that whole point is to lead us again back to we need a savior to save us from that. But in terms of the relationships that we have with each other, uh, is, it, is, is smoking a wise choice? Well, if it's gonna take me away from my neighbors, it might not be the best decision. The same with, uh, as Paul puts here, drunkenness. Okay, is alcohol a good thing? The Bible actually says it is. You know, makes the heart glad. Wine makes the heart glad. What does Jesus do? What's his first miracle? Changes water into water. Into oh, wine. He only made grape juice. He didn't make right. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, changes water into wine. But if it gets to the point where alcohol is something that I am uh, going after so much that it becomes an idol. Well, then it's replaced God, so that's a that's an open violation of the first commandment. Yeah, but but then it could be also that I'm consuming it so much that it's hurting mm -hmm. my responsibilities to my neighbor. You wouldn't want me to show up here drunk. Well, maybe you would on <laughs> Sunday morning no, to uh, no, preach a sermon. No, that would no. that would that would that would hurt the the witness of the of the church, and that would hurt my neighbor at that point. Everything so. in moderation. Yes. So every time you violate something, you you have to have a consequence. Is that what you're saying? Uh, like, well, like for example, every time every time I, I uh, don't all the all the years I think didn't brush my teeth. Mm -hmm. Now I pay the consequence by yeah you know, bad teeth. Yeah, but really, what that is all that is showing is that you're a sinner already. Because the, the only reason you need to brush your teeth is because your teeth are decaying. Yeah. The only reason you need to, I mean, the, the, that's, that, that's I, I'm not being overly simplistic here, but that's it. All the diseases that uh, were just mentioned, like diabetes, kidney failure, cancer, um, you know, whatever it is, all of those are indications that this world is sinful and that it's still fallen and that it isn't going according exactly to God's design. So the reason we brush our teeth, the reason we uh, take showers and wash our hands, the reason you know, some people want us to wear a mask, all of that is because sin and because we're all dying. Our bodies are decaying. 
So there's no, there's no escaping that. But with what God has given us through modern medicine, in some cases, um, through personal hygiene, washing our hands, cooking our food all the way through, or whatever it is, God gives us longer length of days. But even in the end, the, the hairs on your head and my head, though they're not many, are numbered. And God knows them. And God knows that final day that we're going to be here and that he's going to call us home. And that's completely up to him. So that's why. He knows that before we're born. Exactly. Sure. sure. Yeah. But and some, some people smoke their whole life and don't die of cancer. So yeah. It doesn't, I mean, it's, know, yeah. It's not a... Not a and, it, and, and that, again, going back so to... The, the to Absolutely. Life is not fair in that regard, but neither is grace. And that's that was the whole point of, in 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 some sense, Sunday's sermon and the reading from Luke uh, fifteen, is that God God chooses the the ones who are unworthy and undeserving, and says, "I give my son for you." That's not fair. That's not. You know, I should, I should be able to make it up to God on myself. Nope, that's not how you're going to do it. And that's what Jesus is telling the scribes and the Pharisees. It is God who comes and finds you lost and who rejoices over the repentant sinner. So, it's so. like the parable of the workers in the vineyard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. came and worked yeah. for half an hour, got the same pay as those who were right. there all day. Right. Exactly. That's yeah. a great parable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it is. It explains a lot of things. Yeah. When it comes to sin, sin is sin is sin, period. Whether it's you lied to somebody, you, you bear, bore false witness excuse me, about them, or whether you murdered them, or whether you just had an impure thought in your mind, you're no different than the pedophile or the... Uh, or the mass murderer, or there but for just the as guilty as God go on. Right. Yes, that's what it comes Absolutely. down to, Absolutely. and it's and sin is sin is sin. Period, mm -hmm. and it's uh, all of us are, are guilty of it. And so, when it comes before God, the only thing that gets us into heaven, the only thing that gets us Jesus. a spot at the table is Jesus. Jesus. Right. That's what makes it so hard to discuss this stuff because we want to say this this sin of sexuality or whatever uh, is worse than my sin of whatever. yeah you know, yeah and and, it, and, it, and when we try to talk to someone about it if we if we put ourselves on that pedestal beforehand we've lost because our sins are no greater greater or lesser than their sins yeah. that's why thinking about the law because right. the law as Judy said last week you know shows us our need for a savior. That's why thinking about it in terms of God's will and design mm -hmm. is, I think, better and a better way to approach it because right. then in the, in that regard, it's not, it is, you guys are, are, are violating God's will and design, right. but I've done the same thing because I'm not who I was supposed to be. Right. You know, I didn't fear, love, and trust God above all things. You know, I said things that have hurt my neighbor. And God looks at that just the same as he looks at the sexual perversion. And so in, in that regard, there's a... Uh, right. Well, in society, we have radiation. Correct, yes. Of, yep. of, of mm -hmm. sins. You know, yep. I, I like talking about the, well, ver the vertical and the horizontal because yep. we definitely have reading of sins. Yep. Jesus laws. says if you committed one sin, you committed them all. That's yep. true, but man yep. doesn't say that. You know, as far no, as man, no, no. You murder, you're worse than someone. The worst problem, the worst thing you can run across the guy is that thinks they're a pretty good person. Yeah, well, yeah. You yeah. Know, I don't kill, I don't do right. this, I don't rob, I, you know, God's going to take care of me because I am good. Yeah, and right. and and the ones that go, well, I'm not as bad as right. that guy, exactly. which were from our from the gospel reading on Sunday, the scribes and the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. That's why they were so upset with Jesus. This is like, who is, he's a holy man. Why is he with tax collectors and sinners? Well, I say, what's, what's wrong with that? I mean, I, I don't kill, I don't steal. 
Yeah. I, I've been good most of my life. So yeah, but right. that's your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem. I, 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 that's the I, problem. You know, that's yeah. the problem. Oh, no, that's exactly but, the problem. But, but see, that's the thing is, if, if we think in that, you <laughs> don't deserve a place in heaven. Because it's, we're taking away the judgment that's only Jesus. Exactly. Option, right? it's, it's, it's we don't deserve anything. What we deserve, no matter how good we have been, right. is hell. It's damnation. It's separation from God. Yeah. Because it goes all the way back to the beginning when Adam and Eve said, no, thank you, God, we're going to do it our way. Right. Even and, all your good's going to decay, just like the yeah. rest of the world. I mean, you can be exactly. all the good you want. All our goodness, away. all our works... Are nothing but a dirty rag to God. They, they're they're nothing. They're, they're, there is nothing we can do to please God except believe in Him and trust Him. Yep. Other than that, we can't do anything. Correct. And then, and then those. <laughs> what's that? It doesn't, it, just, it doesn't seem fair. <laughs> it's not. It's well, not. that that that's not that's, it's it's not. And 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 here's the here's the most unfair thing about it. God chose you. He said, you're my child. He said, I love you. I gave my son for you. I am promising you heaven. You don't deserve that. But God gives it to you anyways. I don't deserve that. But God has given it to me. None of us in here deserve it. But God has given it to us. And he promises that to us. And it's trusting that promise. It's trusting the person who made that promise possible. Jesus, by his death on the cross and resurrection, it's trusting that that will one day come true for us. That's what faith is. It's clinging to that, saying, you know what? No matter what I've done, no matter what's going on around me in the world, God, you are my God, and in you I trust. You have saved me, not because of my own works, not because of any worthiness in me, but because of Jesus Christ. Because he loves you. That's what you gotta remember. God loves you whether you deserve it or not. He even loves know. Barney. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. When it comes to when it love comes me, to he love you. When it, let me tell you something. When it comes to judgment day, I get up there and I say, Well, let's look at what I did. <laughs> no, don't, no, don't don't say don't do anything. No. <laughs> say say I just you deserve your presence. Present and eternal punishment. Man, all my life, I never stole or I never killed anyone. No, no. When it comes to judgment, Jerry, you say, "I'm unworthy," but that man, the one that has holes in his hands, the one who is sitting on the throne, <laughs> the one that's he, standing between you and God. <laughs> yeah, the one who, the one who, who took the judgment upon himself. He's the one who can vouch for me. He's. He's the one. I can't do anything on my own. But Jesus. Right. You become clothed in the robe of Jesus Christ. Exactly. I had a hard time in life. You let him. Just once? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Of, 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 of not thinking that I had to do something for sure to, to be saved. Even after I was saved, I had I thought I had to do, be good and do this thing. And the more I tried, the worse it was. I never, <laughs> I never could achieve it. And, and, and finally I realized that the only reason I was saved is because God loved me. Not because I was anything I was trying to do, but the Holy Spirit is going to, in you, and is going to change your life. He's going to change you. You're going to want to want to do with things. But you realize that it's up to God. It's not up to you. Turn yourself over to him and let him lead you. Just let him lead you, and, and, and you'll be fine. And if you ever doubt that, guess where you come? <laughs> Sunday morning, you come up to that altar. You come up to that rail, and I, I, I will tell you, take and eat. This is Christ's body, Jesus' body given for you. Take and drink. This is Jesus' blood shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Jesus did everything for you. You're clean. You know? And that's uh, that that's that's also the importance. This is kind of a side note. The importance of communion. And I, I remember if I was who I was talking to with somebody, but um, we can you can come to church Sunday morning and the 
you know, the organist doesn't play quite right and the liturgy sounds bad and the pastor gets up there and he preaches. Doesn't well, know anything uh, except for the divine service too. The, right. And the pastor gets up there and instead of actually preaching a sermon, he just makes fun of one of his congregants. <laughs> and so it's not a very good sermon. It doesn't talk about Jesus. But well, then, yeah. but then, communion happens, and and but as before that, before that, forgiveness as I well, yes, in yeah, yeah, yeah. Servant, <laughs> yeah, yeah, announce yeah. the forgiveness of your sins. Yes, uh, okay, that that part, it, yeah. Uh, let's let's say he forgot that part on on a Sunday morning. <laughs> That's right. So it's it, it, yeah. the point's about communion. <laughs> yeah, the point. Yeah, the point is as long as I mean, as long as he's not up there making up stuff on the. At yeah, the at the right. communion, you know, just right. you know, if, if he says, on the night, our, our, <coughs> on the night our Lord Jesus was betrayed, the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, "Take eat. This is my body given for you." In the same way, also he took the sup the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, "Drink of it, all of you. This is my, my blood, blood shed for you for the forgiveness of." This is my blood of the New Covenant, the New Testament, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As long as he doesn't screw that part up, that's exactly what you have. Because when he gives it to you, that's exactly what it is. Christ's body for you. Christ's blood for you. So, anyways, that's my, that's why I think the practice of weekly communion is an awesome practice because there isn't a week that goes by where we haven't lived up to this and go, God, I deserve your a day. temporal and eternal or <laughs> day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we can. Temporal or eternal punishment. So, um, I don't know. We got it's a good discussion, but we got got a little, a little up the field there. So, um, but it, it, interestingly enough, on on page fourteen, um, this this is where the author addresses our world is a broken place. The sin brought upon the earth by Adam and Eve has festered and grown for thousands of years. And something else to realize is that when Adam and Eve sinned, it was sin in its, its fullness was there, but then it just starts manifesting differently. The next generation, what happens? What's murder? Cain murder. murder. Cain Already, yeah, it's how yeah. bad they got. And what else? What else does Cain do? He leaves. It, well, he didn't say he was sorry, but <laughs> he didn't ask for forgiveness. Well, he, but he he was right. upset. I don't think God didn't like his offer. Yes, it oh, was it was yeah. it was the the envy, the jealousy, coveting, the right. jealousy that started in him first, and then when he says when God says, "Where's your brother?" I don't, I don't know. So he lies. So I mean, right there, you start to say too, because he said that woman you gave me. True. That, that's that was that was deflecting blame. Yeah. But this was denial. Uh, complete. Yeah. Complete yeah. fabrication. I don't know. Yes, you do. Killed him. Anyways. But that's it. Brothers crying to me from the ground. Yes. So. Um, okay. Dropping down to the the next paragraph. The world's plan for sexuality, gender identity, embraces. Do what feels good. Express yourself live for the moment, or any other number of self-centered philosophies. So why we started this class with all that history and stuff, it was to, to give you the grounding of that's where it comes from. This is the, the prevalent thought in our culture today. Do what feels good, express yourself, live for the moment. You self deserve it. In how many commercials oh, yes. do that stuff? Sure. You yeah. deserve. They know they're going to hell, so they're going to have as much fun as they can with the gift. There's, uh, there's truth in that, yeah, right. and um, because they, they don't see a life beyond exactly. this life. Right. Um, okay, humankind's desire to be like God, <clears throat> original sin, and in charge of their own future hasn't changed. Okay? It hasn't changed since what Adam and Eve did. If you are the center of your own world, it makes it so much easier to justify your behavior. If there is no God, you only need to worry about yourself, what you want, and what you make, what makes you feel good. This is original sin. What's my favorite definition of that? Uh, self. Always wanting things to go your own way and not God's way. 
but always wanting things to go your own way. And that's exactly what he's talking about here. Going up to the top of page 15. Some will even say that if there is a God, surely he wants what's best for you. He'll let you work out your issues because he loves you so much. <laughs> okay, does God love you? Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, but does mm -hmm. he... What does that what does that mean? Like, what's he saying here? Well, because if he, if God loves me, doesn't he want me to, to be happy? Be to, be happy doesn't he want you me do to be what happy? your will? Well, he's yeah, not, gives he's you. loved you so much. He showed you the way. Well, okay, well, that's, that's true. He gives, he gives you, you or not. He gives you free will to do what right. you want. That's, well, yeah. that's 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 a yeah misuse of free will. Yeah. So, what, problem that comes here, and again, this ties back to that the philosophical movements is we have interjected, we as, as human creatures, mankind, culture, have injected what it means to love into that definition versus what God's love is for us. What is God's love for us? And this, there's a very specific answer to this. Agape. Unconditional love. Okay, how does God's love take form for us? In the form of Jesus. In the form of Jesus. Yes. God showed his love to us in this way, that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. So his love for us is kind of what you're saying. He shows us the way. Right. It's a very different <coughs> love than, you know, yeah. uh, our, our human kind. Worldly love. Worldly love, yeah. So it is, it is a very specific love. It is cross-shaped love, sure. if you will. It's, it's love for our soul to be saved. It's not, yes. Not a, it is, not yes. Not to be saved necessarily, but it's my soul to be saved. Right. And typically in the world, <clears throat> we love things that make us feel good. So you look at the, you look, <laughs> right, you look at the contrast. God loves something that rebelled against him, that sinned against him. nothing to do with it. The, yeah. He hated it. It's natural enemy. Right. We became his natural enemy. But he puts forward his son, gives up his son for this. Let's mankind in their sinful nature nail him to a cross. You know, this is this is God's love for us. Whereas so it's it's giving up, it's sacrificial. Agape I I take some issue with, with that, but it's it's not terrible. Um, it's there's 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 what what Mark is referring to is, is a Greek word for uh, love, and there scholars go back and forth on that. Well, but um, it's it's definitely not like we use love for. There, there's no love like that that the Lord has for us. There there's there's literally no other kind of love that is like that because. Correct. God doesn't need us. Correct. God doesn't have to have anything. He can have anything and everything he wants. But for some reason, he made us for our, to have fellowship with him. And he has said, I love you no matter what. I want you to be, I can have anything, but he wants you to be somebody. He, he wants you to want him. But you know what I mean? It's not, it's, it. Well, he, he wants you to be his child. Yes. And he, he, is, he is giving everything he, to make he, you that. Give, and he wants you to respect him, to give him credit, and, mm -hmm. and, and to love him back. Yeah. You know, he, he that's what he wants. That's what he made us for. And, and the devil separated us from him. So this is how he called us back to be his children. Yeah. And, and uh, there's no other kind of love like that. And, yeah. and we can't love him the same way he loves us. So I'm going to butcher this quote, but Luther talks about it this way, that um, the love of man seeks uh, uh, an object that will, that will benefit him, that, that he likes. That's how man loves. God's love creates the object that he loves. It's from the Heidelberg Disputation. I'll find it for next week. But mm -hmm. um, it's, it, it's, and that's the difference that it's, that's there. So when we're reading this, and this is how people think about it, what they are doing is taking worldly love, love that they want to experience here, and assuming that that's how God is. But right. the Bible says, no, 
God's love is this way, that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. It's, it's then, we can't understand it. Is the problem is correct because we're not God and we don't yeah. know God good enough to understand yeah. how He does. We, this. yeah, we, yes, we can't. We definitely can't understand it fully, and we're not actually asked asked to understand it. We're asked to just to trust it. Trust it. Yes, exactly. Believe. Just yeah. believe. The other the other thing of this, um, if there's a God, surely He wants what's best for you. That is a huge selling point in the United States, and this is not just tied to gender and sexual identity. This is just tied to uh, being American people, I guess. If you think about who the American preachers are and what is it that they preach, they want they want you to have health, wealth, and prosperity now. Isn't That's that a sign that, that, that Americans are the, the God-fearing people on earth because they live longer than anybody else? I mean, as compared no. to China? No, no I wouldn't. You can't say that. You can't no. Say that. Okay. no. We're just fortunate that God's blessed us this long. Even yeah. We all deserve it. Right? No, exactly. And, but the, the American uh, uh, preachers and the ones that I'm thinking of, Joel Osteen, mm-hmm. um, Rick Warren, um, a I, woman too. Uh, yeah. Joyce Meyer, Joyce and, and Joyce Meyer um, no, there's, yeah, there's a couple women that, that's a, that's a whole other. They all speak so well, though. Yeah, and and they do, and, and that's I mean that's 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 kind of the, that's the thing. You you if you look at Joel Osteen and you listen to him, you, you're like, oh, he's not a bad guy, and right. you know he's, I mean I wouldn't say he's. Well, he's got most, that southern cotton mouth. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but he's got that he's got that you know that charisma that yeah, brings yeah, yeah, that yeah, brings yeah, people yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, listen, and yeah. and. And then all of a sudden, and then I was talking to you guys about um, watch that movie, uh, The Eyes of Tammy Faye. I mean, Tammy Faye and Jim Baker right, right, back right. when that was going on, and okay. um, other Robert Schuller, the other uh, the Crystal Cathedral, and all these these uh, kind of Americanized pastors, preachers, whatever. Um, that's the that's what they give. Is that gospel of health, wealth, and prosperity now? Where did Billy Graham fit in that? Billy Graham's a different, uh, is a different, different breed. Now he's um, been Lutheran. He might have been perfect. Right. right, exactly. <laughs> uh, but no, Billy Graham fits into. He had his errors. Uh, he did not believe baptism uh, saves. That baptism is is God's promise. He didn't, you know, and in that regard, did not agree with the Bible. Uh, but he did preach, Jesus is the only way to heaven, that this life is not the best life, uh, that you, know, you need to repent of your sin and to strive to love and serve your neighbor. And he didn't promise so, that you're going to get rich quick if you believe in that. No, exactly. In fact, he, he in, in several cases, would say the, it's going to be uh, the opposite. All right, the other problem with, with what this brings up, and I... I I kind of harped on the, the American preachers there. They're, they're a whole other topic that would be fun to discuss later. Uh, but uh, so, uh, part of their, their issue and part of the issue with the other side of this that comes out, which, which is the uh, you're free to do whatever you want, the libertinism, um, the, you know, the, the groups such as the, the ELCA and the United Methodist who say, uh, it doesn't matter. You can be, you can be gay and homosexual and active and live that life, and you can be a pastor and do that, and you can, all those things. What this really comes down to, the the issue with both of them, with the American preachers and the, that group, they've gotten rid of the law. They've gotten rid of this understanding that God has a design for creation, and in doing that, what else do they get rid of? Get rid of the law. You get rid of grace then too. I guess. You get yeah. rid of because there's no sense in having. You don't have to have grace if there's no law. Exactly. Right. You have no need of a savior. Right. You have no need for forgiveness. Correct. Right. And that's ultimately what happens because then everything is permissible. Right. And as it's, long as my neighbor forgives me, and that's what this whole push yeah, is but, to make us. Yeah, but you, you it's not even you, you don't even get to that point because you're right. thinking, 
uh, my neighbor my neighbor doesn't have to forgive me. My neighbor's wrong for condemning me. Right, right. right so right, right. it's yeah, you would never that that mm -hmm. so that's that's the big issue that comes up with this is when you get rid of this, when you stop living by this, and this is what sin wants to do, mm -hmm. is that now you have no need for a savior. Mm -hmm. And the church so, then the, the then church is just a, a social club at that point. Yeah, yeah and only, only today matters. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well the gay pastor is giving me communion. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I'm just thinking it's it's kind of a, a the logic of no factor. It's well, How can you even go to someone really like hard that? To say that, yeah. Doesn't it's the Lutheran Church say that even evil men correct can give right. communion? And correct. Still is communion. Well, sure. Well, yeah. Because you correct. So uh, well, this we're supposed to believe that those words are coming. Yeah, but you don't know you from Jesus. Right. Right. So Jesus would not speak through. Uh, yes, he would. Mm -hmm. he spoke through a tax collector and a sinner and a yeah. prostitute mm -hmm. and a yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, the and this is this was a contra this is this was a controversy. Whoa, I was thinking this was a controversy in the early church called the Donatist controversy, and it was the the question. So this was when persecution was going on in, in the church, and there were priests that renounced um, uh, believing in Christ uh, at at some point, and I can remember if they then continued to, for whatever reason, to escape. Uh, persecution. They said, "No, I, I, you know, I'm not a part of this." Or, you know, did something. And then they went back and did the sacrament, did baptisms, or, or whatever. And it, the question was was raised: Well, are, are those things valid at that point? And the answer is yes, because it's not dependent on the character of the 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 man in the office. It's dependent on God's word. And it's the office, not the person filling the office. So in other words, the position of pastor. Mm -hmm. It is that, it is, that is what uh, Jesus has instituted. That is what Jesus has blessed and said this is for the shepherding of the people. Now, the idiot that fills that office right. Right. is a sinner. Is a sinner, exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. So... And that's the and, and this is this is a, a, a again another example of, of, of the the sinner saint dynamic all these tensions that exist in Christianity that the idiot who fills the office mm -hmm. might not be you know he, he might not live the most holy life if he doesn't that's that's I mean that's another thing that should right. be addressed because Paul and um, talks about yeah. what what the qualification actually you will hear about that in two weeks um, the qualifications of what it means to be a, a pastor and those types of things right. but. The character of the pastor does not determine the efficacy of God's word. So it's in the office that Christ has instituted, whoever is speaking in that office, whether he be uh, a, a, a heathen or, or an unbeliever, like it, 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 you know, and, and there have been pastors that have done this, that go on doing their pastors because they don't know anything else, but they have stopped believing the gospel. They've stopped believing this what they're what they're practicing I, I, now that's cognitive dissonance on yeah. them but it's still it is still valid in terms of Christ has instituted this office and as they speak those words of absolution speak give a sermon and then speak communion uh, the words there and just and administer communion, that's still valid because that is all the the validity of it is is dependent on God's word, not on the character of the the man in the office. There would also be, and and this is a, this is this is a tough one to to kind of parse out, but if a woman uh, were to to do communion. You know, is that uh, a valid sacrament? In one sense, yes, because it's still God's word. But is she validly filling the pastoral office when the pastoral office has been uh, commanded by God to be occupied by men? Well, no. And so you get into a, and really where, where this all comes out is uh, 
the doubts that would arise from communion. Because that's, and, and when ultimately when it gets down to it, what Lutheran theology, what Luther and the Reformers put forth in their documents and, and what we have collected in the Lutheran Confessions, it was, to, it was to grant assurance of who we are in Christ. And so when you start to bring those things into question of, of a, a, a woman doing that, aside from it, it being a violation of Scripture, you know, there are questions that arise from that or uh, in doubts that can arise about, well, is this actually Christ's body and blood? Same with elders doing communion. That's why it's, we say the pastor is the one who does communion. The elders can distribute, but the pastor is the one who presides over this and who administers. That's, that's the way Christ designed it. Um, and, the, and these things come down all the way. And, and if you go into other churches, when they just have uh, bread and grape juice and they don't have the proper words of institution and all that, it's just like, well, what are you getting? What is this at that point? And it leaves that doubt. And that's, that's the whole thing, that's the whole driving force behind Lutheran thought is how do I know God loves me? How do I know, how am I assured of this grace, this mercy, this forgiveness of what Christ did on the cross and by his resurrection for me. That's, where, that's what drives everything that we do. Page 15 again. Sadly, the world's plan is just a path to destruction, a plan to lead you away from the true God to an eternity separated from him. Here are the consequences of this, of not following God's law. Uh, the world wants you to be happy now with no concern for the future. It doesn't matter that you suffer for all eternity in hell. That was what you brought up, Chuck. Right. All right. So the contrast to this, God's plan. As we look at God's plan, this is we read in Genesis 127 at the very beginning. Uh, for your gender and sexual identity, we need to start in the place where God speaks to us today, his word. And I will say this, uh, uh, just kind of a side note on this. One of the things that's unique about Lutheranism in particular, other denominations and particularly other congregations will get this, but we believe that the Bible is living and active, that it is God's word, so that when we actually read the Bible, we are hearing God's voice. I mean, it comes through somebody else's voice or maybe our own if we read it out loud, actively doing something here and now, right now. That this isn't just simply a textbook or history book that's set for a certain time to, to tell us the events of things that happened. That's true. Um, that's, that's, its, that's its first um, kind of use. But that it's also the reason we hear the same, well, a lot of the same things over and over throughout the church here. Why, why we always read the Bible in the church service is that this is God's word actively coming to us and you know it's there's a lot of times where it's just divine coincidence that what we hear from the text on Sunday mornings has something to do with our lives uh, through that week there's, it's just this obvious connection sometimes it's not as obvious but those words dwell in us and 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 stir us and that's how the Holy Spirit works in us to continue to be his creatures to be God's creatures um, so, uh, his word. In his creation, God specifically created the male and female, man and woman, just as two. We learned that Adam was created from the dust of the earth. But when God saw that Adam needed a helper for companionship and procreation, Eve was created. And the companionship and procreation, the procreation part there is interesting because that is part of the image bearing of God. When God is the creator, and so when he blesses Adam with Eve that they might procreate, they are carrying forward God's image. Okay. So, woman is literally bone of his bone, um, and then quotes the psalm from David. 
Uh, these words from David's psalm remind us that we were known by God even before we were born. Okay? So, remember how we talked about the genetics that make you male or female? That's what God is talking about in his word here in the psalms. That he knew every fiber of our being before we were born. And that his plan and purpose for us was not to be lost. He knew, he knows, all people are sinners and that they don't live up to his, to his law. But from, the foundation, from before the foundation of the world, his plan always was to send a savior, to poor send child. Jesus. What's poor, that? Poor child. For, yeah, for, for and, and not just you, but yes, but definitely, <laughs> but, but definitely for you. Okay. Um, so more than that, he knew that you were going to be a boy or girl even before you were born while your body was still being formed within your mother's womb. Okay. So again, this goes to part of his design. This is the giving part of God, the givenness of God. That's why when we grow up as boy or girl, male or female, we look at it and say, this is God's gift to me. And I am, and he is equipping me to do things as his creature. And this is even true for unbelievers. God, that's, that's, that's a, when we talk about God's love specifically, it <coughs> takes a specific form in Christ. There's also kind of God's uh, prevenient love for, uh, and benefit for creation that even extends to unbelievers. Unbeliever, Jesus talks about, you know, it rains on the just and the unjust alike. I mean, that's, that's God being gracious to everyone. So even the unbelievers are given these gifts. But specifically as Christians, we're given these gifts to be male and female to continue to carry out God's plan, to continue to carry out his design. And we ought to honor it that way. So when we teach our children that that's, we're ultimately looking, uh, preparing them either to honor what God has equipped them with biologically for marriage or for a life of singleness. But yet realizing if God has made you a male, a man, you have certain responsibilities and, and God has, has blessed you with that. If he's made you a female, he's blessed you with certain gifts. Number one being women can have children. So. Questions, thoughts, smart remarks? Well, let's close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.